GTA 5 and more specifically the Trevor Percent segment, or excuse me, the Countryside segment. It's the second segment out of eight, which uh, to in total uh, is the full game. And to start the segment, we actually have to load this specific save file, which has been made in order to level the playing field for everyone doing this segment. I've already loaded it since it takes quite a while in this game. So let's start by uh, entering the cutscene. Oh, and once are. we see Trevor in the countryside, the timer should start. So in a few seconds time. So now, and I'll be running forward to get into the truck and I'll drive a little bit forward since wait, the guy on the left is kind of dumb and he'll actually stumble into the truck. And I guess Ron, Ron isn't the greatest either since he fell over. Wait. So we'll immediately start off with a shortcut here through the sand, which we normally don't do since sand or anything else can slow you down. Um, but you save so much distance that it's actually worth it to do. So Trevor, just like the other two main characters in the game, uh, also has a special ability. And his one actually does three main things. The first of which is that it slows down time a little bit. The second one is that it prevents Trevor from taking any damage. And the third one is that Trevor actually does more damage to uh, NPCs. You'll know when the power is on because the screen will be uh, kind of orangey, which is kind of weird, but you get used to it. We start off by um, going to the bikers. I'll pay them a nice visit by uh, smashing through the fence. I guess that's uh, a good way to teach them a lesson. We're going up to that farm on the right. That's where they're meant to be. Okay, so let's just say hi and then we'll move on. Go through these fences here on the left, and uh, we'll be immediately buying these binders, which we have to kill. You don't actually have to kill them. Uh, the game uh, tells you to, but you don't have to, because they will eventually fall off the bike. They're not very good bikes, to be honest. But we do it anyway, since um, we just make sure that they're not in your way and they don't annoy you in any way, shape, or form. So for us as we drive, just follow good racing lines and don't crash, I guess. Also, uh, we try to not drive uh, in the dirt on the side since it does slow you down since it's deeper. So we'll take this nice and easy cut here. And we'll have to take as much speed as possible through this hairpin. And in a moment we'll be doing a stun jump in the uh, a stun jump. And whenever you do a stun jump in the game it enables a cinematic or slow motion camera which is kind of annoying because it does slow us down. So in order to make sure that it won't display we just aim our gun and that should prevent it. And there was actually something where you can get in front of the van to have it push you along which is really difficult. Like your run, uh, like your run up to the jump has to be more or less perfect. So aim the gun here and that's nice. So you don't actually have to complete the stun jump. You only have to worry about uh, a good landing and maintaining as much speed as possible through it. So this drive is more or less scripted where I know that I can go full speed through this turn without any worries. Next turn there'll be a car on my left. It's always the same. So in the shootout coming up I'll be using something called weapon swapping. Where if I'm low on ammo I'll switch to another weapon and then immediately switch back to the one I had. In order to get a full clip or magazine or whatever you want to call it. Um, and besides that. The enemies in the shootout are semi-scripted, where I more or less know where they are going to be, but not exactly, so I do have to check the minimap on the bottom left. And I have to make sure that I don't die. Uh, so when I'm close to... Uh, when I've got low HP, I have to enable Trevor's power to make sure that I don't take any more damage. So I'll crash into that green shed to slow down. So I'll spur up my shotgun. Oh, I <laughs> actually jumped out! I guess that's also a way of doing things. He's not dead yet. Okay, then we have one more over here. The one over there is hiding, I don't know why. Oh, he's not dead yet. I use the power since this is very dangerous because of the fire there. Once the bikers come by, I'll blow up the gas tank to kill everyone at once. There will be two more bikers over here. Then I'll use Travis power because I'm shooting with a shotgun from long range. And since it does allow me to do more damage, they will die. So on the bottom left, oh, not yet I guess. The dots will be flashing red and blue which means that I've reached the checkpoint. And I can just blow myself up and abuse the checkpoint system in the game. Because it's put me a little bit forward and that is in the truck. So the game basically wants you to run back but we'll just blow ourselves up and that works out as well. 
But the Aztecas? Man! The Aztecas. It's just a name. Is he Illuminati as well? Oh, and a wacky, didn't get a break one of those So now we're going to pay Ortega a visit and... There is a bug that can occur when entering or starting this bit. And basically it's because you enter the cutscene between voice lines and it's really annoying because you don't really know when you should enter it. So I've got that bug. That's amazing. Really, okay, so I now have to mission fail, which the only way to mission fail here, like I can't bring out a gun or anything. So I just have to keep on driving and uh, wait until it will say the truck is destroyed for some odd reason. That's really unlucky. So just have to wait until the game says that I've damaged the truck enough. So when we actually will push a take into the river, we have the choice to either kill him or let him live. And we will have to kill him because, well, we will kill him because of two reasons. First of all, it prevents him from showing up in the next uh, shootout. Does the mission fail? Somehow. Okay, so now it should work just fine. Um, and the second reason is because our buddy Ron here will actually run back to the truck instead of walking back. So that saves us a little bit of time. So yes, we take an NPC's life for maybe a second time save, maybe two seconds. But that's just to start through of it. Okay, kill him. Try and push Ron back. Oh, I missed him. So you see him running back instead of walking, that's amazing. I have to try and avoid all the rocks uh, that are on the ground and the trees in front of me, that's fine. So just this drive is pretty easy, no traffic that can actually mess you up or whatever. So you might have noticed by uh, the input sounds that I'm that I'm mic's picking up, or the fact that I'm moving my arms a lot. I'm actually using a controller and a mic and keyboard at the same time. Because the game is really nice when it comes to switching between input devices. Like, one moment you use your controller, the next moment you're using your keyboard. And you can actually use them at the same time if you wanted to, which I sometimes do if needed. And GTA 5 is really nice about it. Something else that's kind of interesting is the fact that I'm playing on patch 1.51, which is the newer version of the game. And the reason that that's so interesting is because we used to run on patch 1.27, but because of a recent update of Rockstar, we're not able to do it anymore, which is uh, really annoying. So the only uh, interesting thing that's happening is this little shortcut here, which, I mean, it's nothing to write home about. And that's the end of the first mission. And right before the mission pass screen will come up, I'll jump, since you can't run while the mission pass screen is on your screen. And the next mission, Trevor, Phillip in Trevor Phillips Industries, spawns by a phone call from Ron, which I'll immediately hang up on. So jump here. And because we're not normal, we're going to get into Trevor's truck a little bit differently, and that's by doing this. So what I did there... Oh, don't stop in front of me, please. So what happened there is that I got physically in the truck and then pressed the button to enter the vehicle. And the game is basically trying to find a way to get to the door and simply can't because you're already in it. Um, so just give up and put you in the driver's seat. Um, you don't have to actually fully listen to phone calls in this game. As soon as they actually connect to a call, you can just hang up and the game will be like, okay, that's fine. Get to come to a stop, crash into this, leave the, ah, I couldn't leave the door open. And jump, since you're forced to walk here. So jumping uh, makes sure you have a little bit more momentum and speed. You're still banned. This is us. So I'll drive a little bit forward to make Tao Cheng uh, get into the truck a little bit faster. And you might have seen that I started driving before he actually was in the truck completely. And that's because you can actually start driving once they start their getting into a vehicle animation, I guess you could call it. Um, though you do have to be careful since that is different for uh, every different for every single character in the game. So next up we'll have a sharp right, or left turn, excuse me, and a, okay, no reason to drift there, but whatever, and a shootout with, I don't know actually with who, doesn't matter. Anyways, I'll immediately try and run outside to have a better view and to better position myself to kill everyone. I'll start off by hitting two guys as well as the f one of their vehicles. And then there will be three more. This ain't done until they're He's not dead yet. Gone. Okay. Grab the armor here. And then blow up this guy's tank to kill the last few enemies that are in front. Grab the grenade launcher to prevent a little cutscene from playing later on. 
He's not dead yet, but we'll worry about him later on. This is and then blow these people up with the grenade launcher. So some enemies I will try and shoot. Like him. And some I will uh, blow up with a grenade launcher. Just depending on what's faster for each enemy. These last two I have to kill with the AR and then I'll blow myself up. So, there we go. <laughs> oh, that's a really big explosion. And once again I'm abusing a checkpoint so I spawn in the shop. And my enemies will be right in front of me. Say hi enemies. Okay, then blow them up to end the mission. And Oh, I was a little bit too late with uh, activating Trevor's power because what that does is basically skip some voice lines so he can uh, end this or end the mission a little bit quicker. I think we have seen quite enough. Instead of taking Trevor's truck, we'll take this one since it's a little bit faster. And when again, uh, when getting to Trevor's trailer, we actually will not smash through the fence or anything like that. We have to be very careful since there is a soft lock that can happen at that point which basically means that the game will freeze and the only thing you can do is uh, press balls which is uh, really annoying slow down for the jump since we don't need to flip or anything like that and take a nice and easy little turn through here and that's fine oh I'm getting out on this side okay I guess I'll be jumping then What's going on, so the next mission we, we start on some ATVs, which is really annoying since they can really easily spin out. Pushing forward while driving is a little bit faster, so we'll do that. And we have to go to ammunition now to buy a sniper rifle with a suppressor and a farm scope. And as well as that we'll buy a mini SMG with full ammo, an extended clip and some grenades. We're actually going to need all of them during this run. Don't want to do that. Okay. That sniper on your wall looks like it'll do the job. Get that look off your face. I know you sold Cletus. Okay, and that's pretty all good. The only annoying thing is that um, in this newest patch there are a lot of a lot more melee weapons, which means run, that you have to scroll run, I like I don't I Meet can't just scroll through them since it's way too many. Here I do not want to uh, go through these bushes and they'll actually pull you to the middle of the bush. Which is kind of annoying and slows you down, of course. Let's try the water tower jump. Nope, not even close to it. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. It didn't activate the cutscene. Well, it didn't stop me there, though. Actually, really funny. So, the, re the reason that this jump is really difficult is because you don't have a speedometer, you don't have a good reference point, you just have to eyeball it and hope that you get it. Which it's not that easy. Like you saw there. You can slip in and for every notice. good attempt where you actually get it and land on this lower platform, there are the these bad attempts where you just sent, got sent flying. So during this bit, the we just have to right. wait. Our buddy Ron has go to uh, on, go son. and uh, park his ATV over mind, there. And we just have some downtime now where you have to uh, wait for him actually to do that. Which is, uh, this is, this is one of the most boring missions in, well, it is the most boring missions in this run. And the one, of, one of the more boring so missions in the run, like a full run of the game. Because there's just way too much downtime. So after a certain voice line, I'll can look to the right because I know that the enemy will be there. Believe this, Ron. Oh. One of these too early. Is having a seizure or okay, and I shoot the lights. So he'll be cautious and he'll start walking forward. Walk forward, please. Is he not going to? Oh, he is. There you go. And kill him. So the reason I don't kill him immediately is because I want him to be laying here since uh, the next enemy will come in a van and he'll drive like over here, keep on driving, and he'll stop over here to make a phone call. And only when he gets out of the car or out of the van, we can kill him. If we did earlier, we'll mission fail. And because the guy is now in the way, uh, the enemy will check on the corpse that's lying there and he'll get out of the van, which means then we can kill him earlier. Which is really nice. And after that, there'll be a few more enemies to kill, which will spawn in a, um, in a consistent way, in a scripted way, to be honest. Okay, so as you can see, this fan is really slow, so we do not want to let it drive any longer than it needs to. And once he gets out, we can just kill him. So I can aim right about here. Don't have to hit a headshot or anything. I mean, it's a sniper rifle. And he's, oh, he's actually behind the stairs. That's unlucky. 
The one over there, one more here, and the last out of the three is there. So I have to look at Bron, who's over here. And there'll be two more enemies coming out of here. That's one. And that's the second one. And the last two, the first of which will be on the ATV driving like this. And we will pull back here. And the other one is going to be in a helicopter over here. So once the guy in the ATV comes by, I've got like a very tiny window to hit him. And I have to wait before I shoot. Like when I see him, I have to wait like a quarter of a second before I actually hit him. Which is really difficult. Ah, oh, I missed him. It's a really difficult shot because you have to wait instead of shooting immediately, which is kind of annoying. Okay, then the helicopter, where is he? There he is. Hit him immediately, that's nice. I'll try to kill the guy in the tower here, but it sometimes takes a while for him to spawn and I just completely missed him there. I have to kill everyone here by blowing up the gas station, which is pretty easy enough. And when killing all the, all the bikers, I can leave one of them alive to continue the mission. Where are they? Um, is my weapon reloaded? There are two more alive. More than needed. Where is the other one? Where are they? Oh, there he is. Okay, and now I have to hold the button to look backwards. Otherwise, a bug would uh, happen where you're just stuck. Because just of the like fact that the Rest camera is really weird. So this should have pretty easy, 100% scripted. You actually, you would have to try to die here. Like technically speaking, you could actually finish this whole bit without having to fire one bullet by just using uh, a Travis power whenever you're about to get shot. Let's go, Ronald. Next up, um, two vans will be coming around the corners. And you can easily blow them up like their gas tanks are so flammable. It's ridiculous. Like, these bikers don't have money for good uh, vehicles or anything like that. Apart from bikes, of course. So this blows up. This one as well. And there'll be one more biker over there. So fun fact, you can't actually shoot Ron in this bit. Like, I can shoot around him, which is fine. But once I aim at his head, you can't anymore. Like, it'll just prevent you from shooting. I'm just holding the left mouse button the whole time and it will automatically stop. So that you can actually damage the plane as much as you want without any consequences. Let's go, Ronald. So when I'm in my plane, I'll immediately start to turn right and uh, try and take off. Well, I'm not going to because who, who would take off? That's boring. I'm just going to jump out of my plane. And because we're already off of the runway, we once again will use a mission checkpoint, which will put us way up into the air because the game thinks that we've taken off because we're not on the runway anymore. I am in first person for a reason I'll explain in a little bit because I want to talk about this guy. He's got. He is ridiculous. And the game throws through a barrel roll or something uh, to uh, get rid of him. He'll just fall by himself, which is very nice. So the reason why I'm in first person now is because you have to look at the altimeter. Since the game basically has got a mechanic which replicates air resistance, where in real life where you can fly faster if you're at a higher altitude because of the fact that there's less, there less air resistance, the game basically has the same where you'll go faster if you fly above 900 feet. So it's just a, a set value. So as you can see I'm going around 140 knots compared to 120 which you would normally go in this plane. I'm also not really following Ron. I'm kind of cutting corners here because the less distance that you travel, the better and faster it is. I'll just have to line it up with the where we have to drop the shipment. And once we drop, once the other camera will appear to drop the shipment, we can just immediately turn to our final destination. So I do have to lower a bit in order to be able to drop it. You might have uh, started going down a little bit too early. Not a big problem. So as you can see, I'm already turning. Um, did I just do a barrel roll? <laughs> I did, I think. I've got no clue whether I did or not. I think so. Th that's not something that you're meant to do. So once again, above 900 feet. And you have to go about 15 degrees on the compass between north and east, and then you should be good to go. And you might have been able to hear that the voice lines went on playing way longer than they should, because the game doesn't expect you to live with that shipment so quickly. I have to be high enough to clear these mountains, of course. 
And at the end of the runway that we're going to land at, there will be a hangar that we have to pass the plane in. And we do not, and I repeat, do not want to crash that plane. Because of the fact that after we park it, we'll see a 40 second unskippable cutscene explaining uh, business properties in the game. And after that, uh, you'll continue. But if you uh, mission fail by parking and crashing, whatever, you'd see the cutscene. Only Mexico. then it would mission fail you. Yeah. You'd be back, could be back around here. He's you'd have to fly cartels. all the way back to the runway. And then, to add insult to injury, like you have to watch that unskippable that. cutscene again. I mean, Spain, I guess the game really likes those businesses are. and really wants us to care about them. Do we have time for a for donation? Sure, go ahead. Because we have a donation coming on in from um, <clears throat> Killer Chair Two Four Three. That's what. Uh, the, the comment says, "What's this? We'll a donation for me, but it's also not from me. Okay? How could this be? Is this the Mandela effect?" <laughs> I, I, I know who that's really from. I, I can see you there in chat. Okay, nice turn, and just make sure to not crash. So now we can. Uh, all admire how amazing businesses are in this game like we don't even care about them in the run only in the 100 percent run you have to actually own a certain amount of properties i'm not quite sure i think it's five not too sure but you don't even have to do anything with them which is kind of strange that the game gives us this unskippable cutscene next up is the mission uh, crystal maze which i actually really like it's one of my favorite missions in the game when it comes to speed running it um and you'll pretty soon see why I will take the June buggy uh, instead of the plane. You might think, why not take a plane? It's fun. Well, it is, but it's so slow to take off, to land. And we actually need to go to a second uh, destination, so that would take even more time. And it's just too risky because dying in a plane is easier uh, than in the June buggy. Though I will say that this isn't the greatest vehicle for two reasons. First of all, it's so lightweight, which means that it can spin very easily. And the second thing is kind of a problem that I have. As you can see, the front is way smaller than the rear of the truck. And sometimes I think that I can squeeze to a gap or between cars or anything. And my front tires will, but my rear tires will get stuck. And that's really annoying. Almost did it there. So for example here, my rear tires could get stuck if, that, uh, if I misjudged it. So once again, we'll be going to the bar that we were at before. So we can start this mission. Once again, just some good driving. And when doing the jump coming up, you just, you don't want to get too much air time because while in the air, you of course can't accelerate, which does slow you down. Some nice jumps, I guess, because why not? And again, I'll be smashing into one of those balls and trying to jump to maintain as much speed as possible. There we go. So next up we have you to go sure to the O'Neill Brothers' Farm, farm. and what you normally do is kill everyone that's there, go to the basement, uh, pour a gasoline trail from the basement to uh, outside, of the high, outside of the house uh, or farm and set it on fire to blow everything up. We're going to do it a little bit differently. If you paid attention to uh, the previous mission, you might already know what I'm going to do. And it's actually really fun if we put it somewhere. So now just go over here. Just ignore the skull, like I said. This is even one of the skulls that you don't even have to uh, pick up on. It just, it's, it's useless. It's, it gives you some backstory, but it's not really uh, something that you need to hear. Just try to not crash here. And that's everything, I guess. Oh, that, I didn't expect that truck to turn, actually, but luckily uh, it did it way too early. And now we're going to go over here. You don't actually need to go to the yellow dot. You can just go anywhere close to the farm. I will activate the next cutscene. And I do have to park this bug in a specific oh, way uh, to make sure that we still have it after this mission. Free. Otherwise, I would have no good vehicle. So while running now, I'll run in first person to show a little bit faster. And once I'm getting shot at, I'll enable Travis Power to not take any more damage. And instead of killing anyone, we're just going to run through them because you can't take any damage. And that's so amazing about it, so that's nice. We do have to grab this jerry can, throw out the pistol, oh, oh, go up the stairs idiots. please, and now uh, throw a little grenade and then run for your life. And if done well, you've done this mission so quickly.
It's I love it. It's so amazing when you do it. Such a joy to do. Don't need to do anything. Just run in there, throw a grenade, and you're good to go. So now onto the final mission, friend request, where you finally get to go to Los Santos. First, we have to smash through this fence, which is kind of more difficult than my thing because there's a lot of stuff down there which you can crash into, like rocks, no poles, bushes that can spin you out, or anything like that. So you do have to be wary there. And once again, I'll be taking a little shortcut over here. So after this rock, I'll head right. And I do have to slow down in a minute because I don't want to do this little jump here since Travis Trailer is right in front of us. So slow down. And that's good. It doesn't matter what, like, I'm not even touching anything, it just walks in its own because it here. does. And something interesting, um, oh yeah, that's already told that. <laughs> so we're first going to go to the park, so this trailer park, stop. where we at, where we were at before in the first mission. And we're going to uh, do some stuff there, I guess you could say. And then we'll head to Los Santos uh, to meet Wade's cousin's boy. And somehow these two are even weirder than one another. Which I don't know how that's possible, but it truly is. So let's throw a little grenade. Why not? <laughs> some fireworks. That should be fun. You saw it blow up in the top left there. You can actually uh, do that right now. And the reason for okay, that is, um, I got my what's it called? Where we oh, you can actually away, commit one you know, crime kind of wet over here. Uh, whenever you have the cops. Uh, excuse me, going what, uh, commit one crime during a mission without the cops going after you. Unless they're right beside you or they actually see the crime ha happening. At that point, you're screwed. Up here. So, we're over we're here, and we'd have to um, plant some sticky bombs on the biker's Did trailers. But we're just going to do it a little bit differently instead of doing it all stealthily. We're just going to uh, drive in here and drive through here and just uh, put some sticky bombs everywhere where we need to do it. Then blow some of them up and blow the last one up in a minute. There we go. Nice. So the reason I blow up four and then one is because if you blow them up all at once, uh, a little cutscene where play will play which well, slows us down so we don't do that. And once again, this drive is kind of difficult for two reasons. First of all, the June buggy, and second of all, the conditions like the weather. Um, since it's raining, it actually does uh, give you less grip, which is kind of annoying. And what else? Oh, yeah, we're driving through to it right now, more or less. Only driving through sand and stuff like that, which makes it more difficult to control this vehicle, but it's not the end of the world. The so, this guy it's not a problem if you go through or off the row here a little bit. It's all about maintaining as much speed family. as possible. So, cutting a little bit isn't the end. Like, it's, it's not as much of a deal. And of course, just oh, be sure that you're not crash. Which is kind of difficult because the vehicles can be all over the place. And instead of going around this little hill, well, it's not a little, but instead of going around it, I'll actually just go over it. Which is great. And as you can see on uh, the minimap, I actually have to go around this one as well, which I am not going to do. Like, no way. That takes way too much time. So, what I'm going to do is just uh, drive around. Or go up it. So I do have to be careful that I don't. Uh, okay. They don't fall down one of the sides. Oh, keep it, keep it. Okay, okay, okay. Slow That's down, it. slow down. That giant Just fine. This Los thing is. Santos. Listen. Oh, get, 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 get. We're not there yet, Wade. Um, this is going to be a bit so, of a problem. I'll have Santos. to actually go I down a little bit to is. gain some speed. To come here. Oh, this is going to be kind of a struggle. Ah, uh, can we make it up? Part of the state. Uh, I think it can. Can it? Yeah, it can. Yes, it can. Oh, this thing is struggling. Okay, so now we go down again, only this time on the other side. And while going down, I do have to hold the brake a little bit to make sure we don't spin out too crazily. Like, this is just fine. Normally, you'll flip a couple of times, which is really dangerous since this vehicle can explode uh, very easily. That was really unlucky. Okay, so instead of driving into the yellow dot, we'll just drive a little bit around it. 
since it skips an animation of Trevor looking at the city, which we do, so we do, we don't need to see that. Santos, I'm just going to smash through here. Shepherds. And once again, I have Where to try and keep this vehicle under control, since we'll have another little jump. And going too fast will we'll, we'll make sure that I end up in this garden or at the swimming pool, which I do not want since ah, yeah, you can't really get out of it, right, right, out of there right, right. with this vehicle. So, this kid, I'm skinning another planes, stun jump, so I'll be aiming with my gun and skipping it. Am I going to land on... Okay, for a second I thought I was going to land on top of that car. And it was all going well until one day, just <laughs> that would have been amazing. So, as you can see, the yellow line that is the fastest route towards the destination, but I'm not going to follow that. Because it's not the fastest route, it's the shortest route. Um, but doing this is way faster if we don't take nearly as many turns, which is great. So once we get to this part, I do have to put my camera like this to make sure that I don't crash into any vehicles that are parked on the side. So I can see, okay, so I'm fine. Uh, no, nothing over well, he here. Boy. Well, that's amazing. Shelly's nothing in my way. No, she came over here. And then the oh, final stretch oh, towards here, uh, the yellow I marker. Oh, map. that car's going to turn. You. Already had a suspicion. Already had such a... Oh, that's unlucky. I expected it to turn and it did. Oh, so I tried to get out of the car. It's... Can I do it? Yes. And enable travel power to stop the voice lines. And I'll punch up the stairs since that's a little bit faster. And there we go. And once the mission pass screen comes up in a few seconds, I will... Or the end... Or the run ends. So I'm not doing anything apart from spamming A to get on with the cutscene. So that should be... Time. Okay, that wasn't too bad of a run, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> I made quite some mistakes and the time wasn't that bad to be honest. Yeah, quite pleased with that. Very well done. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was fun. That was fun. Huh? It's one of the most uh, fun categories to do in this game. 